Hi, this is Chicho again. Now, if you've been following the mask series, this wall should be fairly familiar to you. I've used this wall uh, uh, on a fair bit of uh, different sections on the, at the, for the introduction of a lot of sections. Basically, this time we're here to do, uh, I don't think I ever did a really formal introduction to the factoring section. We're about halfway through the factoring section. We're getting towards the halfway through the factoring section. And I really haven't done an introduction to the factoring section. And a question came my way with, uh, from Series 3A, from some of the other factoring videos, which, uh, which was a great question and I've been thinking about it a lot and this is sort of my second take on this. The first take I sort of went off on a tangent and uh, uh, it, was, it was hard trying to explain what it, where I was going with it. So, so do, so do, so do, so do, so do. Uh, do another take on this and I wrote down a fair bit of stuff and I'm going to try to fit it all on this wall okay basically the the, the the quick answer to why we factor is is basically twofold okay the first reason is the same reason why we talked about prime factorization prime fact to uh, branching things off numbers rational numbers into their prime um, prime factors from series one is basically we want to find out what they're made out of right what the, what what their core building block is what 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 the simplest form of the function is that we can break it down to right so if you have a large polynomial we factor large polynomials just basically same way we try to figure out what things multiply together make up the original polynomial that's the first reason why we factor polynomials the second reason is and it's it's 100% associated with the greatest common factor is because we want to find commonality between different polynomials or different functions, right? So what I'm going to do right now is, uh, you know, try to fit, all, fit everything I wrote down on this, uh, on this wall here. And uh, again, we're going to do, listen to a little bit of music and, uh, you know, I'll lay it down. And as soon as we finish laying it down, we'll come back and talk about it, okay? From series 3A that came to me from one of the other factoring techniques was basically why do we factor? It's, it's a simple question. Uh, the answer is is huge. But what I'm going to do right now is, uh, well, what I've done right now is break it down into two subcategories of why we factor. Okay, the first one is. Basically, it, it's only related to GCF, which is the greatest common factor, and we've already done a series on that, right? Explain what GCF is. And GCF is used to find commonalities between things, right? That's a huge part of you know what life is about, what mathematics is about, right? When you're given one function and another function, what's similar between these two functions, right? That's the GCF. Right. If the second reason we factor is something that we talked about in series uh, series one, which comes down to the real number set. We started off with the real number set and broke it down to rational numbers and irrational numbers, right? And we figured out that every number in the in the rational section of the real number set can be broken down to its prime factors, right? So that's a huge power. That gave us the power to take 
you know, a large data set and break it down to its core elements, which is basically the prime numbers, right? And that's why we end up factoring, why we're factoring uh, functions, trinomials, why we're factoring polynomials and other types of factors, right? Which is to break functions, to break equations down to their core elements, to see what they're made out of, right? We started off, we took it from when we're prime, Prime factorization doesn't come into polynomial equations. It comes into the real number set. It comes into dealing with, with numbers. When we had, you know, the number 12, we break it down to its trees and factor it out to its prime numbers, right? So the number 12 is made up of 2 times 3 times 2, right? So we broke down the number 12 to what, what its core building block is, right? What it's, what it's made out of. And that's exactly the same reason we're going to start factoring polynomials. So we're going to take, you know, a large polynomial and break it down to see what other polynomials make up the original polynomial. And if we can factor those further, we're going to do it again, we're going to do it again, and we're going to do it again. So what, what all of these factor, all of these factoring techniques do is they sort of work together for us to break down large polynomials or polynomials in general to find out what those polynomials are made out of. And at the end, we can have small polynomials that when multiplied together, give us the larger polynomial, right? You know, breaking down polynomials works exactly the same way as it did for breaking down numbers, uh, natural numbers, right? Or any number in the rational number set, right? So what we end up having is multiple functions multiplied together to give you the original function. And what that tells us is those functions are now the building blocks of the function that we're looking at, the function that we're analyzing, right? Or the model that we're talking about. Right? And once we created functions for different things, once we created different types of models, then we took our models, you know, an equation, we came up with a function that explains this, whatever it is that's happening, right? Then we take that model and take a look at what it's made out of and break it down, factor it out, you know, if it's a polynomial, factor it out and try to figure out what other functions are embedded within the original function, right? So. You know, there's, there, there's a lot to this. Why we factor is because we can, one of the reasons. And because we want to find out what things are made out of. Uh, that way we can use them, compare them, uh, model new things, improve our models, and, uh, you know, hopefully progress and evolve past our limitations, past our assumptions. Because every function, every function is you know, has assumptions associated with it, right? So once you break things down into smaller functions, into, into their core building blocks, you can see if your assumptions are correct or not, right? You can analyze your functions further. You can, uh, you, you, you can take, you know, a part of this function, you know, you break this function down and you, you, you know, you come up with a new function and each one of these is a different function, right? That when put together, creates your function that you might have started with, right? You can also reverse this, right? You can start off with a whole bunch of functions and multiply them together and see what you end up with, right? So all of this could be reversed, right? You could go this way or you could come this way. You can take a whole bunch of element, you know, basic functions, right? You can take a whole bunch of prime numbers, multiply them together and go this way, right? Instead of taking things and breaking them down, you can actually start creating things, right? And this also works with functions. We can take functions and use all these different factoring techniques to break these functions down into smaller functions and find out what this original function is made out of, right? Or we can take smaller functions, and we have a whole bunch of smaller functions, right? We can take smaller functions and multiply them all together and come up with new functions and analyze those new functions and try to figure out, you know, what the new model says or if it's even relevant, right? Do all the assumptions here hold when we get to the original function up top, right? Or when we get to a new function up top, right? Multiplying this function and this function, whatever those are, W and Q together, you know, are they compatible? Can we multiply them together to give us GX? And will GX make any sense? Is that a relevant function? Is that, is that a function that we can use? Or does it tell you anything? Or is it, just, is it garbage? Is it a whole bunch of words put together that have no meaning? Right? Or can you take a whole bunch of words and create a sentence that 
you know, gives you more information? Can you take a whole bunch of functions and put them all together that gives you a brand new functions that has, you know, a meaning that you didn't know before, right? So again, it's just, it's, it's just playing around with the language. You know, why we factor? There's multiple reasons why we factor. Two of the basic reasons, two of the core reasons that we factor is, one, we want to find what's similar between things. Two, is we want to find out what things are made out of. 